Good morning, Wabash. Today speaking in Pioneer Chapel is the president of the student body, Charlie Esterline, with his talk entitled The State of the Union. Charlie is the 104th student body president of Wabash College, a rhetoric and classics double major, and a native of Brownsburg, Indiana. He has served many roles on campus, such, such as president of the Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity, senior consultant for the CIBE, co-organizer for TEDx Wabash College, and a member of the Sphinx Club. Please join me in welcoming Charlie Esterline. Good morning, Wabash. Thank you to the Sphinx Club, the student government of Wabash College, for this opportunity to speak here today. I would like to thank my family, friends, and mentors for helping me prepare for this moment. This is a truly humbling moment, especially in, in such a crucial time in our college's history. I would like to start the State of the Union with a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. He said, carve a tunnel of hope through the darkness, through the dark mountain of disappointment. For the Wabash community, this year has been full of disappointment. To name a few, we've had the fall athletic season canceled, study abroad opportunities, moot court, an in-person play this fall, the Monon Bell game, and so many more milestones that our community has had the privilege and opportunity to celebrate in previous years. But my hope, building off Dr. King's remarks, is to carve a tunnel of hope through the dark mountainside of disappointments this year at Wabash College. These disappointments are not just limited to the students, but also include our faculty, staff, and administration. By looking, at how, look, by looking at how previous generations of Wabash College community members have handled similar crises, we might be better equipped to tackle the difficulties, challenges, and disappointments that may lay ahead of us this year. Let us reflect on two brief stories. First, I will highlight how the faculty and staff and administration have historically adapted to change to ensure Wabash College could survive, even in time of crisis, disappointment, social and economic unrest. The V-12 program, the V-12 Naval Officer Corps program was established at Wabash College in 1939 to assist the United States government in training and developing commissioned naval officers to serve in the, public, in the Pacific theater during World War II. Thanks to the work of President Trippett and his leadership and his connections within the United States government, we were able to land here at Wabash College one of the officer training school contracts. Wabash College was the smallest college in the United States to secure, secure a deal with the U.S. Navy. After a deal was reached, Wabash College had to adapt and overcome to a new challenge. The first and obvious obstacle was avoided, and that was enrollment. By securing this contract, Wabash had, was secured for enrollment for the foreseeable future. But the next challenge was adapting the current curriculum to fit the Navy's new requirements. One professor who was forced to adapt and change was Professor Jack Charles. He was a classics professor at the time. But when the college, when the college called on him for help, he answered and stepped up to the plate to teach something completely outside of his, his wheelhouse. Any guesses? Well, he volunteered to teach naval history and cleverly worked in the battles, battles like the Battle of Salamis where he could still draw on his classical forte. This brief anecdote highlights how agility and adaptation from the faculty, staff, and administration can ensure the college remains viable for the future while ensuring that our institution remains at its core mission statement to instruct and educate men to stand tall to think critically, act responsibly, lead effectively, and live humanely. This fall, the college has made an incredible investment to keep us residential. A few of these investments include testing all of us before we return to campus, continual testing to ensure our safety, increased technological capabilities in our classrooms, and all the brand new hand sanitizers we see across campus. These are just a few investments that the eyes can see, though. Numerous faculty and staff members and administrators have started new roles within our college to better support our efforts to stay residential. Like Professor Jack Charles of Classics, our faculty, staff, and administration have begun to answer the call. To the faculty, staff, and administration, with these new rules and your existing rules, remain agile. New problems are going to arise during the semester. One final remark I will leave the faculty, staff, and administration, do not be afraid to call on the students for help and to aid in these endeavors. We are here to support and assist wherever we can. We, the students, appreciate all the hard work and sacrifices you are making to ensure we remain a residential college. These efforts will not go unnoticed and will forever impact the current student body of Wabash College. 
My second and final example is geared towards the student body of Wabash College. In 1918, Wabash College, Wabash College established the Student Army Training Corps to combat the lost generation that Great Britain saw during the First World War. The lasting impact of lost generation will truly be unknown, but imagine how different the world could have been today if these scholars, artists, politicians, poets, and many more did not perish in the war to end all wars. But at the end of, the world, uh, at the end of world War I brought on an onset of an invisible enemy. One morning, the men of the SATC went to line up, but tragedy struck. One man passed out, then two, and so on. The disease that caused these men to collapse would become to known as the Spanish flu. But during this global pandemic that took more than 50 million lives across the globe, no student at Wabash College lost their life. But we did lose one member of our faculty, staff, and administration. Her name was Nurse Ethel Newell. Thanks to her efforts on campus and help turning the Phi Delta Theta House into the, into the campus infirmary, the college was able to survive the greatest pandemic of the 20th century. This history, authored by Norman Little, a fellow member of the SATC, gives us a glimpse into the period of time at Wabash College where true strength, courage, and brotherhood was at test. Due to the efforts of Nurse Newell and the SATC, one very important student survived and went on to graduate from Wabash College. His name was Andrew Jackson Moyer, a rural Indiana farm boy who was brought to the college as a part of the SATC program, who majored in now what we would call biology. He had the incredible opportunity to receive an education from Wabash College. This was due to the U.S. Army and U.S. government's attempt to not lose a generation of educators, artists, influencers, poets, and so on, like Great Britain did during World War I. After Moyer's time at Wabash, he went to work as a researcher for the United States Department of Agriculture and United States government in Urbana. His goal was to attempt to better understand what could be made of ag agricultural waste while Moyer was still working, uh, agricultural waste, excuse me, while Moyer was still working at Urbana, the Battle of Britain had, began, had begun. For anyone not familiar with the Battle of Britain, this is when the Luftwaffe of Nazi Germany began a series of bombing campaigns on Great Britain to prepare for a, a sea and land invasion of the island. During, the time, during this time, Great Britain sent the children, their children, their art, their wealth, and much more to the countryside to escape the damage of the German air raids. One thing that was sent to the United States instead of the British countryside was the research for a famous drug we call penicillin. During the, although Moyer did not discover or create this drug, his work at Urbana with research that was supplemented by British scientists led the United States researchers to discover ways to create and preserve the drug hundreds of times faster. This aided the U.S. allies during the D-Day invasion of, of Europe during World War II. Wider access to this, to this drug during the Allies' campaign through Europe would eventually lead to save li millions of lives of Allied service members during the war and continue to save millions of lives today. Who would have thought a rural farm boy from Indiana while receiving his education at an all-male institution in the middle of a pandemic would assist the world decades later? I can confidently say I'm not, the, I'm not a biology major or a chemist, but I do believe we have numerous Wabash men tuning into this speech today, that have the capacity and the capability not to just save the lives of millions, but to change the world for the better. Even though we are, we are in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, your work here now matters and means something. Don't forget that. Out of crisis and disappointment, beautiful things can happen. Look where we're standing today. In this very location, the bar barracks of the Student Army Training Corps once stood. Remember, you are sitting in a spot where one man helped change the fate of humanity with the knowledge he learned here at Wabash College during a global pandemic. You still have an opportunity to create a productive change for the future, like Andrew Jackson Moyer, or to rise to the occasion like Professor Jack Charles. These activities, programs, and initiatives on campus that you participate in now will help shape the world for better in the near or distant future. I am confident in that. So, my challenge to you, the Wabash community, is to work together through collaboration, innovation, and challenging the status quo to go out and carve our own tunnel of hope through the dark mountain of disappointments. We've have, we, have the, we have the great opportunity now to make a great future out of a mountain of disappointments that this spring, summer, and fall have been thus far. So why not start now? Thank you. <laughs>